Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What is your weaknesses? Maybe it is a son or a daughter that hasn't quite turned around the way you thought he or she would be. Maybe a job situation in your life that has gone awry, that's gone sour. A medical diagnosis that has scared you. Maybe like Paul, it is also insults, hardship or persecution. Not many of us go through this these days, but some do. Some of us go through hardship, persecution in our workplace because we are a Christian, because we believe in certain principle of life. Some have to lose their job for holding on to certain principle of life. Whatever it is, my friend, Paul says here, he will boast in those things. Okay, the word boast here, I don't want you to think that it's arrogant. What it means here is he rejoiced. He rejoiced because he knows that God is doing something else in his life. Because when we are weak, the power of Christ rests on us. When we are desperate, we rely on him. And that's why yesterday in our corporate prayer, I shared with you Psalm 142. David cried out to the Lord. So when we cry out to the Lord, sometimes we've got no words, you know. We can only cry out, God, please help, please help. Nothing else we can we say because no words can describe the pain. But God comes in a powerful way to help. The stronger the enemy comes at you, the stronger Jesus is in you. Yeah. Maybe you hear voices telling you to just quit, lah, throw in the towel. A lot of time we always hear this word. I just want to quit. I also tell that to my wife most of the times in my 40 years of working. Sometimes I come back and I say, I, I just want to quit. I can't take it anymore. I just want to throw in the towel. I just don't want to do it anymore. You see, the moment you do that, you are wasting away sometimes the opportunity. You're wasting away your pain. You're wasting away your hurt. You're, you're wasting away the suffering. God can use this for a redemptive purpose. And so, the stronger the enemy comes at you, the stronger Jesus in you. Don't stop. When you are weak, then he is strong. Remember, the greater the attack against you, the greater Christ is in you. But you have to hope on his presence, his provision, and his power. I believe these three Ps are important in our life. His presence, his provision, his power. And so in conclusion, this week I suggest that some of us go back, take a moment, okay, take a moment. Uh, I know we are all in a busy life style we are having, but just quieten down for a while. Take a moment to write down what are you really suffering from? What are you really struggling? Let's be honest about it. Sometimes, you know why, we think that the smallest thing in our life, we are very shy to say, God, I'm struggling over this. We're very embarrassed to say, but not. You are with the Lord. You are with God. This weekend, go back, these weekdays, whatever day, you find a time when you are alone. Just be honest. I can tell you, you know, when our prayer are so specific, God answers us specifically. If our prayer is so general, it becomes very general and we don't know what we are actually asking God for. As a child of God, just be specific with Him. Just ask Him, what are you really struggling? It could be embarrassed for others to hear, but not for God, not for Jesus. He knows you even before you say it out. So why don't you just be honest with Him? And so what you do is you take out a piece, an envelope. And so you write 
on the outside of the envelope you write this Jesus these means these are yours for my transformation and then you write whatever you want to write put it inside the envelope put a date and you keep praying about it I can tell you God is faithful he may not answer you according to what you want but he will give you the clue to those things or he will actually answer you specifically okay let me end by saying this sometimes suffering is the will of God I, I hope you're not surprised with this go to 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19 it will say so therefore if suffering is the will of God don't waste your suffering don't waste your pain it will bring honor and glory to God in suffering you grow in hope for the glory of God being manifested in your life a few days ago in our chat group uh, the CG2 chat group one of our members there put down there uh, who knows any ophthalmologist okay and I know one of sister wrote back and say yes I know the ophthalmologist is you know somewhere in KL you can go there as I was actually preparing this message the word ophthalmologist strike me you know I don't know why for certain reason sometimes in your own life also I'm sure when certain words people say uh, it just strike you it says dawn on you and so I was trying to remember about this op what does ophthalmologist does you know what, what is this function of an uh, a specialist who is good in, in a, the eye specialist it tries to maintain your eyes right so that you don't go blind that's the basic thing I, I, I know lah, huh? so what I did was I tried to google like, and do some research I know it's silly I know some of you are saying what why you want to do all this thing you're, past, you're very free but not really lah, huh? I, I just felt that I need to close this today's sermon with something that God wants to tell you all and so I went and looked around I realized this there's a contrast okay a contrast between uh, an ophthalmologist what we call the eye specialist then a painter okay there's a contrast a painter means a painter what a painter always have imagination right an artist must have an imagination he paints according to his imagination okay he tries to convey his imagination to all of us, the audience, through his painting. As opposed to an ophthalmologist. An ophthalmologist, an eye specialist, tries his best skill in the world to make sure that we see the world according to what we see. And so I found this quotation from Eugene Peterson. We need an ophthalmologist rather than a painter. A painter tries to convey to us with the aid of his brush and palette a picture of the world as he sees it. An ophthalmologist tries to enable us to see the world as it really is. And so Jesus, Jesus has come given us hope wanting us to see the world as it is suffering is going to be with us for a long long time until Jesus comes but don't stop there my friends let's see the world as Jesus sees it because there is redemptiveness in the world don't waste away our pain share with people sometimes when we share our pain people will realize and can connect with us quite easily and so 
wherever you go whatever you do whether you sit on a grab car or what share you you don't have to share Christ in that sense but share your life because people see Christ in you share your life share the pain people can connect with it share what you have gone through your experience because that's what the world needs the world needs to see as it is really is with that let's close I'm going to ask uh, Timmy to play, uh, to sing for us the closing song. I see, as we sing this closing song, friends, whatever you're going through right now, just submit to the Lord. He cares for you, He loves you. We, we shall stand and sing this.